Hey everyone. So while you may have seen ML.NET being used in C Sharp apps, did you know that it can also be used in F Sharp apps as well? If you aren't familiar with F Sharp, it is a functional first programming language. And in this video, I'll show how to use F Sharp to build a machine learning model with ML.NET. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio, and I have an F Sharp.NET Core Console project loaded here. And I already have my my data files already loaded here. I have separate train and test files. And the data is just a, the simple salary data that we have used before with just user of experience. And we're going to predict the salary based off the user of experience. So like usual, first things first is we need to bring in our ML.NET NuGet package. using version 1.3.1 here. All right, let's get started. I'm going to actually, I'm gonna keep the zero at the bottom because this main method needs to return an integer. And this is just gonna be the X code that it uses. And the first thing is we need to create an ML context. There's no new keyword here. You don't need to do this in F sharp. It does it automatically. And since I have two different files I need to load in, I'm going to create a method here. I can do this in line within F sharp and call it load data by path. I'm going to give it a path as a parameter. And notice in F sharp, I don't need to create parentheses for my parameters here. And in this method, I'll create context that data that load from text file and I'll need to create an input schema class I pass in the path and it has a header of true and the separator care is a comma so to create this uh, input class here. Um, I'll just do this in the same file. And in F sharp, uh, it's going to be a new type. And it'll be salary data. And I'll set it equal to open and close brackets. And like in C sharp, I need to use these load column attributes. And the first one is going to be years of experience. It's going to be a float. But instead of just regular float, I need to say float 32. This is a, it's going to be a 32 bit float here. And then I'll do load column for the salary. It's also going to be a float 32. Let's bring the namespace in. There we go. And then I'll do that there. So next we'll load our training data and we'll call the load data by path. And so we need to give it some, our, our file paths here. We can do this up all the way up at the top. Do train file. Sorry, train that CSV, and we'll do the same thing for the test file. Over past, and then we can pass in our paths, and we'll do the same thing for the test data. Uh, uh, the test file, not test data. So next to create our pipeline here. And to get started in F sharp, we need to use something called estimator chain. It kind of helps uh, with the, bring us the, the correct types and all that for F sharp. So we'll append and we'll use the concatenate transform to create a features vector from our years experience column. 
and then we'll append the copy columns transform. Yes, so I can just get a label column from the salary column. And then we'll bring in the regression trainers. And let's see, let's do online gradient descent. And since we have a features column and a label column, uh, we don't need to pass in any additional parameters there. And with that, I'm just going to print in the console. And to do that in S sharp, you could do print fn for print function. I do training model. Next, we'll create the model. We'll just we'll fit on that pipeline. Fit. And once again, we don't need any parentheses here since it's just well one parameter. Uh, if it's more than one parameter, we would we'll use parentheses there. So we fit on our training data. And next, we can get predictions by transforming on our test data. And we do another print function uh, or evaluate the model. And next, we get some metrics from our model. And there, we use the context regression that evaluate method. We pass in the predictions from our test data. And we get the label column name, which is label, and then the score column name, which is going to be score. And that score is going to come up later in, a, in another type that we'll create. So let's print out a couple of metrics here. We'll do root mean squared. And we can do interpolation here, string interpolation, but with the parentheses. That's going to be a float with two decimal points. It's going to be a metrics, a root mean squared error. And we'll do the same thing for r squared. The metrics of r squared. Next, to get the prediction function. And you notice we're, it's pretty much the same process that we do in C sharp. Just a little bit of syntactic differences that you get with F sharp. But since it's all, since they're both .NET languages, we can interop uh, libraries between the two languages. So context.model to create prediction engine. And we give it the input column, input type here, salary data. But we also need the prediction type that we need to create as well. And Real quick, we'll pass in the model for that parameter. So we'll go up and we'll create another type. It's going to be salary prediction. And this is going to need column name attribute. And this is going to be that score column that we mentioned uh, just a little bit earlier. And I'll call it predicted salary. And it's going to be float 32. So we'll put that here. So you notice we get an error here. A generic construct requires that the salary prediction type have a public default constructor. And so in order to fix that error, we have to give the salary prediction an, an attribute here. And that attribute is called CLI mutable. That just gives it that default constructor that the area was telling about. So we have our prediction function. Uh, next, we'll actually create a prediction. So use a prediction function called predict on it. And in C sharp, when we did this, we created a new uh, salary data object. We don't quite need to do that in F sharp. Uh, it can actually infer the type for us. Uh, so we do square brackets or curly brackets. And we'll do years of experience, and we'll say eight that we want to predict. Now, however, we still get some red squigglies, and that means we need to give it the salary property as well. And because we don't need this for prediction, we'll just put 0, .0. .0. In fact, uh, we need 8.0 .0 as well, uh, 0f, to make it a float. Uh, instead of separating each by a comma, 
uh, needs to be separated by a semicolon. And I tend to forget that sometimes. Unfortunately, not being able to do F sharp that much. So with the prediction, we'll print out the predicted value. And that's going to be the prediction that predicted salary. So let's run this. Uh, actually, real quick, um, we'll do a console.reline so it'll stay there for us. And we get a little warning here. The result of this is a string, and we're not doing anything with it. And so what we can do is that we can pipe it to a built-in function called ignore. And what that does is just, like the name is, it ignore, ignores what the output of this is. All right, so let's run this. All right, so we couldn't find input column years experience, so we might have, uh, and that is because we have years of experience here, and these need to match what we get into the input. So let's run that again. That should work. Oh, I forgot to change it down here as well. There we go train and evaluate it on our on our model here but we get a big negative r squared and prediction doesn't really make much sense for a salary that's uh, so one thing that you would have to do pretty often when doing machine learning is experimenting with different trainers or uh, machine learning algorithms so let's try this poisson regression here run that and see what we get all right, so now we've got a R squared of 88% and 97,000 is our prediction for eight years of experience. So that's a much better results than what we're getting in, our, in the previous trainer that we used before. All right, so that's just a quick introduction on how to use ML.NET within an f -sharp project. Uh, as you can see, there wasn't too many differences other than some syntactic differences there. And we also got to see where I messed up a bit and how I fixed it. So I hope uh, at least that part was helpful. So until next time, thanks for watching. And if you like this, just give this video a like. It really helps out. And if you want to see more, just hit the subscribe button. Thanks.